Oh, Learn. Wow, that's nice. That was great. I had no idea. I would buy the wow. CD. I that think was... she's better than she was when she was uh, doing the 80s thing. Really? Yeah, I, I, I like jazz more than I like uh, 80s music. Oh, really? Yep. No, you don't. You love 80s music. No, I yes, don't. Yes, you do. No, yes, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes. Nope. Didn't yes. even like it that much in the 80s. You're a fan of the Bangles. I've seen your collection. Jen <laughs> loves the Bangles. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Anyway, yeah, Lee Aaron. Hey, there you go. You've got to get down and check out Lee Aaron tonight at uh, Arts Court. And there, there's a reason to do so. Wow, what a performance. Uh, a very nice Meet Lee. Lee. Very nice. Was she? Yeah, absolutely. Very, very, very nice. So get on down, check out uh, Lee Aaron tonight, and listen to the jazz. That's not all. It's going to be a big musical experience. It'll be a lot of fun. So uh, beat poetry, uh, the whole bit, uh, images set to music and stuff. It's going to be a blast, an experience not to be missed. Um, but something else uh, that's on tonight, of course, on Rogers Television, uh, the, uh, the hockey game, right? That's right. The big hockey game on tonight. So uh, and, and that has to do with tomorrow's program, because we're going to be chatting with some of the 67 this morning. You know you that? You better believe it. Yeah, well, you darn, yeah, I better believe it. So hopefully What's tomorrow, by the what time happened? we talk to a representative from the Ottawa 67s, they will have another win against St. Mike's under their belt. That's not all. Today is National Book Day. Tomorrow we're going to read, well, we're going to talk about a great new book called The Grim Pig. I've got it at home. It's all about the newspaper industry. Fantastic novel. That's not all. Okay, so here's the thing. Here, here's something I'm looking forward to because, of course, as a fan of uh, movies, right? You like movies, right? I'm a big fan of movies, and, of course, uh, I love reading the reviews of movies. And, of course, Jay Stone from The Ottawa Citizen been reviewing for quite some time and always gives a very interesting uh, review to a lot of films. My favorite, uh, personal favorite review had to have been, and I can't remember the name of the movie right now, but it was with Freddie Prinze Jr., Sarah Michelle Gellar, uh, a whole bunch of people, and it was uh, this cutesy little movie, but he wrote it in the style of uh, Valley Girl. So the entire <laughs> review was, was to the effect of, you know, so like, you know, you like. Anyway, the entire review, very interesting. Anyway, Jay Stone, you know him as the, uh, the uh, mo movie reviewer for the Ottawa Citizen. He's coming on the program tomorrow. We're going to talk about Freddie Got Fingered, and uh, we're going to find out, you know, how you become a movie reviewer and that's how right. you review a film. What do you look for, et cetera, et cetera. So that's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to talk about And we're going to get movie. a performance out of Michaela Foster Marsh. She is an incredibly talented local performer. Plus, of course, Volunteer Week continues. Yeah, yeah. Music. 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 Oh, yeah. So have a great uh, evening, and we Music. will see you tomorrow for the Tuesday edition of Daytime Recap and Hockey. Can you do this, Jen? Try and do uh, this. No. No, just I'm... try. Watch, watch. You just, it's like doing the wave with the arm. Okay, let's like this. Doing the wave with the arm. Let's try. If we both do it, it'll look. It'll be an interesting image, right? Music. 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 You don't want to do it? No. It'll be fun. Music, hockey, and books tomorrow on Daytime. Music. 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 If you have comments or wish to purchase your own copy of this program, just dial the Rogers Television Viewer Response Line at 759-8622. From distant stars to untamed lands. Are we having fun yet? Informative. With one small step for man. And entertaining. It's amazing. Frightening. And fantastic. Mulder! Programming that will open your mind to the unknown. This is space. Call 1-888-ROGERS-1 today to get space. The Imagination Station. Seven people are making choices to change their lives forever. Maybe it will make you want to change yours too. The 12 week program, only on Rogers Television. Catch every hit and miss on the next OHL Primetime. OHL Beaver, only on Rogers Television. A Rogers Television News Break from the Y105 News Center. Good evening, I'm Cindy Woods. Premier Mike Harris says his government will guarantee a safe, affordable, and reliable supply of energy, with word today that Ontario's electricity market will open to competition in May of next year. The announcement had been expected last year. Officials say it's too early to say how major job cuts at 3M will affect the company's operations in Brockville and Perth. 3M says over the next year it will reduce its workforce by 7% or 5,000 jobs. The cuts are blamed on the economic slowdown in the U.S.
MPs have been voting on a private member's bill calling for warning labels on alcoholic beverages. They'll warn about fetal alcohol syndrome and recommend pregnant women not drink. Showers, maybe thunderstorms tonight, cloudy and windy tomorrow. In the Y105 News Center, I'm Cindy Woods. Sharing information, ideas, and points of view. This is Rogers Television. Shalom and welcome to the April edition of Shalom Ottawa. I'm your host, Jonathan Baker, and we have got a packed show today, so we're going to get right to it. Uh, my first guest, I'm joined by, or with David Cooper, pardon me, from the Israeli Embassy, and David's going to tell us a little bit about Yom HaZikaron first and uh, some other events going on in Ottawa. Okay. Thank, thank you for you. coming, first of all. Well, thank you. Well, Yom HaZikaron, as you may or may not know, takes place the day preceding Israel's Independence mm -hmm. Day, which is a day of celebration. So preceding it, it's a day of reflection. It's a day to remember those people, men and women, fathers, mothers, who died in the achievement of Israel's independence and for its continued existence. Mm -hmm. It's a day of deep reflection. It's a day to remember. In Israel, uh, the day begins, uh, it's actually the, the evening before, by a siren that sounds throughout the country. Everyone stops in their tracks. Traffic stops. People get out of their cars for one minute as an air raid siren sounds throughout the country. Uh, and the next day, there's special ceremonies remembering the soldiers that died in the military uh, cemeteries, their services, and uh, memorial events. Now, how will they be? How will it be celebrated here in Ottawa? In Ottawa, the embassy will be hosting a memorial service April 24th at 7:30 at Beth Shalom Synagogue, which is on Chapel Street, uh, the old uh, JCC. Mm -hmm. uh, the embassy. There will be. Uh, ceremony which will be about an hour and a half um, we'll have some special guests we'll have uh, a military attache um, there'll be uh, a memorial ceremony there'll be some songs uh, lighting a remembrance torch uh, and so forth it will be a very moving moving event it'll be uh, yeah i imagine it'll be very reflective and yeah. and people will be speaking more of a from a personal standpoint i would yeah. imagine we will have people who actually participated and also people who lost family members participating in the ceremony. It's also, in this time of crisis in Israel, it's also time for people to come and rally and to remember those people who are right now mm -hmm. on the front lines in Israel dealing with the current situation. I understand that um, Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaTzmaut this year, the, the theme is more solidarity. Definitely. I mean, it's a reflection, a natural reflection of the current events that are happening in Israel this year. Mm -hmm. Last year and the years before, we were a little bit more positive about uh, how the peace process was going to continue. But because of the unfortunate situation, it's also this year it's a time of solidarity. Sure. Now, to, to do a, a full circle here yeah. and, uh, and talk about another event that, that the embassy is involved with is the uh, film festival this year. This year, the uh, film festival will be running from the 21st of, April, uh, 21st of April to the 26th. Okay. It's six days of uh, films, which is different from the past, which was a one-day affair. And this year, what we've done is we brought together six of Israel's best films, mm -hmm. and we'll be showcasing them at the Bytown Cinema. And that's uh, every night, I imagine? Each night uh, there'll film? be a film, okay. uh, beginning with Urban Feel, uh, which is the opening night. They'll actually, the embassy will be hosting a reception afterwards. The director of the film, Jonathan Segal, will be there to talk about his film and to mingle with the people who come. But the best way to check the times is the Daily Ottawa Citizen okay. or the uh, uh, Bytown Film Guide. And the okay. Bytown Cinema is on uh, Rideau Street. Well, thank you very much for coming in, and best of luck with the, with the film festival this year, and I hope 
you got a nice turnout as well for Yom HaZikaron. Thank you very much. Thanks for showing up. Claire Cohn, Manager, Vered Israel Cultural Program and Community Events Coordinator, joins us right now on Shalom Ottawa. Thank you for, for showing up today, Claire. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's nice to be here. Oh, we're glad you could come. Um, Thanks. Tell us a little bit about Yom HaTzma'ut uh, in Israel before we talk about Yom HaTzma'ut in Ottawa. Uh -huh. First of all, Yom HaTzma'ut means the Day of Independence. And uh, this year we're uh, celebrating uh, the 53rd year of Israel's Independence Day. Um, it has been going through a big transformation since the beginnings of uh, 1948. In the past, we used to have a huge military parade mm -hmm. in Israel, and that was basically the main focus of the celebration, and a lot of dancing in the streets and so on. Um, five years ago, I spent a whole year in Israel, and uh, the, I was fascinated to see the change and uh, the difference of uh, celebrating uh, that very important day. Uh, what, what they do in Israel is um, a small communities celebrate it on their own individually. Okay. So it's like Hamad Gan or uh, Giva Time or small uh, places uh, outside the, you know, um, any place uh -huh. would have their own little gatherings okay. of the community. They'll come together, invite entertainers, famous singers and entertainers, and they would uh, spend the whole night singing and uh, entertaining the, oh. the community. So, the, so it's pretty different. And uh, the military parade is completely passé. It's no more, huh? No more. So there's no one central no. party well, or, or no. celebration? No, there isn't. That's interesting. Yeah. Now, what do you think is going to happen this year? This year actually is more of a solidarity with Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not as, um, as a happy event uh, because of the political conflict and uh, the situation with uh, security and, and so on. Um, I'm not pretty sure uh, how this is going to go in Israel. Mm -hmm. But uh, in uh, Ottawa, yeah, I wanted are, to ask you. Yeah, in Ottawa we are celebrating in the Soloway JCC uh, Community Center, and um, uh, we are going to have a rally. Mm -hmm. um, rather than calling it a celebration, we're going to call it a solidarity event with Israel, and um, and then it uh, it will consist of uh, a program, mm -hmm. which will take about 50 minutes to an hour. Uh, we will have um, the ambassador speaking and uh, other guests. Uh, the Oto um, Shia Ottawa Choir will be performing uh, a few songs on the stage. We are about 60 people in the choir. I'm one of them. I love I'm, that choir. I'm by happy the way. to uh, <laughs> to announce it. I am. Well, we, one we've, of the people we've there. showcased the choir in the past. Yes. Oh, you did. And oh, that's right. I just uh, Cantor Ben Lolo is one of my favorite guests. Oh, he's, he's next to wonderful. you. Next to you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> he's wonderful. Yes, he's got a, a very special spirit. Yeah. And, and the personality, and he's just great. By the way, we are having a, a major event on May the 13th, uh, a special concert uh, for Shira Ottawa. Oh, really? Yes, in Gudat Israel. Oh, that'll be nice as Everybody's well. Everybody's invited and there are tickets available okay. in the center. Now, uh, another question I have about the Yom HaTzmaut in Ottawa. Is that similar, what you're doing here, similar to what other communities maybe across Canada and North America were, are going to be similar. doing? similar. I, I would say uh, other communities gather in, in community centers and uh, celebrate together. Yes. So, but it's going to be more of a solidarity than yes. a celebration. Yes. Well, a, a celebration follows, but it's, it, you know, it, this, the whole atmosphere is not as yeah. cel celebrative as it, as it was in the past, and hopefully the last time, and, and next year we'll have a happy, yeah. a, a happy celebration. And uh, when we finish the, the um, presentations, mm -hmm. and Shira Ottawa will sing, and then Hillel Academy Choir will be okay. singing as well. I was in that once. With, oh, <laughs> did you? How yeah. interesting. Uh, Ricky Grebler, she's great, and she's, uh, she's been the... Um, the conductor of this uh, choir for many, many yeah. years. 
very uh, professional person. Uh, and then uh, it'll be um, followed by Atikva. We'll sing the, the, the Atikva. And we, uh, from there, uh, it'll be uh, moved on to uh, Rane Liran, who is coming from New York. He's a very prolific and uh, prominent singer, oh, Israeli okay. singer. Uh, he used to sing with Nechama Hender in the past. She passed away, by the way, uh, sadly enough. And uh, so he's coming from New York on the 25th to, um, to perform. participate and perform and, and sing with us. And that we're all looking forward to meet him. It sounds like it's going to be quite a night. If you could yes. just uh, tell everybody again where, okay. when. Okay, uh, it's on, um, uh, it's going to be a Wednesday night, mm -hmm. 7.30, um, in the Solway JCC. Uh, it's free of charge. Everybody's invited. Uh, the whole community uh, we are hoping to have there, and um, that's about it. Well, thank you and very much. There, oh. there would be some falafel and uh, well, some food. Okay, I'm there. Uh, <laughs> you almost <laughs> had me so, and then you said the falafel. There you I'm, go. I'm kind oh, of like, there would be food and drinking and, laugh, and laughing and celebrating. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank in. you. I really appreciate Thanks it. Very Take much care. For having Bye. Me. Thanks. Peter Weiser joins us now, a local photographer. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Now, I understand, or I know, actually, I don't understand, you uh, just came back, or, or recently came back, from your first trip to Israel. Yeah. And you decided to capture the country through your art, through photography. Oh, yeah, it was, it was magnificent. Yeah. I mean, first of all, I had no idea as to what to expect once we got there. I mean, I had a little bit of an idea. You have preconceived notions and that, but it just, uh, I found it to be breathtaking. So yeah. my camera and my film and everybody put up with me for the two weeks that we were there, and it was marvelous. Now, I'm familiar with some of your other paint, or your other photo uh, photographs which I know are outstanding. Oh, and I'm not just much. saying that because you're my guest. <laughs> um, but tell me a little bit about these ones. About, and I understand also you're having a show, which is you know, one of the reasons why you're here. So we're going to get to that. But please tell me about your painting or your photographs. OK, well, I, I guess maybe the first one is, is the typical photo that you would get in Jerusalem. And that is of the wall mm -hmm. uh, with the temple on the mound in the background. And it was just it was taken. Uh, Actually, on a Saturday afternoon, I'll probably be in trouble for that. Actually, because they only they only allowed me to let, to take two photos, oh, really? and then they asked me to stop because I wasn't thinking about it. But it was about three o'clock in the afternoon. It was just the way where we were standing in behind, and it was the way that the clouds were in the background, and the way the sun was was reflecting off the gold dome. So that was was the first one, and it was uh, it's really a, a very special photo. And then uh, on our travels, we we drove about 2,000 kilometers while we were there. Mm -hmm. So we were down in the Negev, and, and we were at Ben Gurion settlement. Okay. And the view there, there's, there's one of, uh, of the Negev from there that's just mind-boggling. It's just so beautiful, and, and it's just not the typical photo that you would expect of a desert, because the desert is like sand and everything. Mm -hmm. This is more rock. Okay. So uh, that was the second one. And then there's... Uh, there's one that I called uh, Diesengoff Hangover. And what it was was I was waiting for, for my lady friend and her daughter. They were in trying on bathing suits. Uh -huh. And I was sitting in an outdoor cafe. And there was a dog on a balcony up above, across the street, hanging there. And there were two pups down below. And this dog sat there for about half an hour or so. And it was the way that he was like so relaxed, hanging over the edge of the balcony, looking down uh -huh. at them like this. So. That's something else that really caught my attention. And the, the fourth photo is uh, on the kibbutz. And it's just a typical kibbutz house and, and what goes on or in around the property of the kibbutz. So it's, uh, that's so, what it's like. I mean, you really got to see a lot of the country in the two weeks that you were there. Oh, yeah. Um, any plans to go back? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. And tell me a bit about the show. Uh, well, it's, uh, it starts at the uh, Soloway Jewish Community Center on Sunday, and it goes from 3 until 7 is the opening. And then Monday to Thursday, it runs from 6 till 9 p.m. And then on Sunday the 29th, it goes from 2 to 5 p.m. Okay. And there's all together, there's about 34 different images in the show. Really? And that was really difficult, because I took just over 1,100 photos while oh we were there. God. So it's like breaking it down and breaking it down and trying to figure out 
what you like, but then of course what other people are yeah. going to like and are going to appreciate seeing. So there's not particularly a theme to it, as in like I'm not a, a, a landscape photographer or something like that. I see things that I see that catch my attention or the things that I take photos of. So often it's something that you may walk past every day and you kind of see it, but you don't really notice yeah. it. That's the kind of thing that I really appreciate. Is there one, I know you just said you had 1,100 uh, pictures. Is there one or two particular ones that are your favorites? Yeah, I guess I'd have to go back to the first two that I was telling you about, the one of, of the wall and the one of the negative. Those mm -hmm. are the, as I was going through all of the rolls of film, those are the, the first two that really kind of took my breath away. But there's just, there's so many of them. Yeah. Uh, and like I said in the show, there's 34, but I'll have um, a couple of books there as well that'll probably have another 30 or 35 photos in it that people can look at yeah. as well. Uh, we're, I imagine a lot of these photos were, were portraits or, or just uh, people on the street and that. Were they receptive to that? Yeah, there was no problem yeah. that way at all. Um, I was a little bit more cautious in doing that because of the time that we were there. Uh, we left here on December the 15th. So we were there when, when most of the problems mm -hmm. that were going on were going on. And, and luckily for us, uh, like I said, we did about 2,000 kilometers. We went from, uh, well, we, went, we landed in Tel Aviv and went up to Akko. We went from Akko as far down as, as Elad, and we did both sides. We didn't see any violence. We didn't hear anything. But still, when you were in some of the marketplaces, that just... Yeah. You're a little bit more cautious, but then I, I think that's a normal thing that you have to do whenever you're not in your own city. Sure. You know, because you don't know your way around. You don't know what's going on. Sure. But it was marvelous. Well, again, it's uh, this, actually today, because the show airs on Sunday. Okay. So uh, it's later this afternoon. So yeah, right. Come on. <laughs> people can just head, out, head down to the Solovay Jewish Community Center for your show. I, I hate to say it, but I hope it rains on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I hope it's raining yeah. and you come out because you want to be entertained. <laughs> no, it, it's definitely going to be entertaining, I, I know for sure. And, uh, and I really want to thank you for, for joining us today. Okay, Jonathan. And thanks thank for bringing in the pictures. Okay. It's really nice to see you. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. Okay. We're joined by Ronnie Podolsky, uh, site manager from Amdocs Canada. Thank you very much for, for being on Shalom Ottawa today. Okay. Ronnie, you are going to be lecturing uh, at the Solway Jewish Community Center on April 30th about technology. Correct. And what, uh, what will you be talking about? I mean, <coughs> technology is such a broad subject. Um, what will you be discussing? Okay, the basic uh, theme that I'm planning to uh, present is the main or major effects of technology in high tech over our uh, uh, daily lives, the influences of technology, of the way we uh, uh, interact with each other, the way we socialize, the way we perform our work, the way we are at home at our leisure time, uh, the influences of uh, uh, such small devices of, as the cell phone mm -hmm. that each and every one of us has, the changes that it has made to our lives, the influence of our uh, very uh, common uh, access to uh, the internet, you know, the fact that uh, now times we just go through the internet, we want to shop for something or mm -hmm. look for something instead of making a call or running to a travel agent or doing this or doing that. So th this is the main focus of uh, uh, the uh, lecture. I'm also going to uh, uh, tackle the uh, Israeli point of view, the influence of and development of high tech in Israel. Israel today is being a, a hub for technological yeah. advancement and development, the way uh, Israel is influencing the world with its technology, and the way Israel is being influenced by that uh, major development. It's, it's almost, I mean, well, we all know it's bringing us closer together. Um, and Israel is, as you were saying, a major player in this. And some, might, some people might not have known that. What, if you know, was the reasoning behind it to, to become such a player? in the technology field? I think it's mostly a, a case of, um, you know, no choice. Israel, as we all know, does not have uh, uh, much uh, natural resources. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have uh, gold or oil, diamonds. Hell, we don't even have uh, water, you know, yeah. not much of that. So uh, um, there has been a need to develop a resource, and one resource that has developed considerably is the uh, resource that uh, many of us possess, which is the intellectual mm -hmm. resource. 
and uh, uh, that has uh, uh, driven uh, a development in that uh, direction. Um, the need for uh, armament development or sophisticated arms have also uh, contributed towards that, where our military industry has uh, uh, put a lot of emphasis on um, sophisticated mm -hmm. armaments, and that has created a generation of uh, high technicians, yeah. which is now in the market. And, and it just expanded naturally into... Yeah. Uh, into into the commercial uh, marketplace. Sure. So who who's welcome at this lecture? Anybody? Older people? Younger people? Or yes, I, I think that lecture will uh, suit anybody who, who would like to hear about a little bit about uh, um, what, is being, what is happening in the world, what is happening in Israel in that uh, facet. The lecture is not going to be very technical. It's going to be lighter than that. Mm -hmm. So, Very user-friendly. Yes, I, I hope to do that. Uh, but anyway, anybody who has a bit of interest in our daily life, in the effect of uh, uh, technology over our lives, is uh, more than welcome. And it's being presented by Amdocs? Uh, no, I am employed by oh, okay. uh, Amdocs, but uh, it's being presented by myself. It's being presented by Ronnie Podolsky? Yep. And it's April 30th at the Soloway Jewish Community Center. Do you know what time it's at? I think it's 7.30. Okay, well, best of luck with the lecture. I hope a lot of people uh, show up and thank you very much for joining us thank today. Thank you. It's nice meeting you. Alex Griller will be joining us in just a moment to speak about the lost art of the Holocaust, a lecture coming to Maksiki Hadas on May 8th. But before we get to that, I would just like you to, to recognize that on April 19th, Yom, it was Yom HaShoah. And I would just like to take a moment to recognize and honor the memories of those who were involved in the Holocaust, both living and dead. And if we could just take a moment of silence to recognize that. As promised, Alex Griller has now joined us, and I'm, I'm a little nervous because you were once a host of Shalom Ottawa. Yes, this is a homecoming for me. Well, welcome back. Thank we didn't you. put up a banner or anything, <laughs> but um, you're going to tell us about this, uh, the lecture that uh, Hector Feliciano will be coming yes. to Ottawa. And tell us a bit about uh, the lost art of the Holocaust, which is what he'll be speaking of. Well, it's a fascinating event, and uh, you just spoke about Yom HaShoah, and of course this has very direct links and connects us in a very real way to the Holocaust. Hector Feliciano is an acclaimed author from the States. His book is a dynamic bestseller worldwide. It's called The Lost Museum. And he has a most fascinating story to tell. His visit to Ottawa, which is taking place on Tuesday, May the 8th, uh, is being sponsored by three separate organizations. And I'm actually here as a representative of Yitzhak Rabin High School, if I can give the school a plug. Um, but also by the Canadian Museum Association and by the Canadian Jewish Congress. And Hector is a brave man and apparently a wonderful speaker, mm -hmm. although I haven't heard him myself. He will be talking about his quest, an epic quest, to locate lost art of the Holocaust. Um, as you probably know, there's been a tremendous uproar in worldwide media about the lost art of the Holocaust, the victims mm -hmm. who disappeared into the concentration camps, and the art and paintings which disappeared into thin air. And Vic uh, Hector is the man who is responsible for tracking that art down and the fascinating stories behind the tragedy. It promises to be a fascinating lecture and a fascinating evening. Now, all these stories that he has are collected in, in this book that, of his? Yes, the book itself is the story of the quest. And it's really a detective story. The elements of danger, because there have been attempts on his life, of political intrigue, of corruption, of greed, and finally, of honor because finally galleries and museums the world over have been forced to ask really difficult questions mm -hmm. about the art which they supposed they, they owned. But if there are any pieces for which the provenance is unsure, they have to go back and try to trace to whom they rightfully belong. Now, I, I, this, I don't know if you know the answer to this question, but 
Where does the art go once it's discovered that it was stolen? Well, we have a very interesting local case here going on in Ottawa at the moment. Uh, Vera Gara, who is a Holocaust survivor, was a little girl during the, the war. Um, she escaped with her family from Austria, and she doesn't remember the particular painting which is now under dispute. But there is a lawsuit going on against Vienna galleries which have paintings which one is led to understand allegedly belonged to her family and were stolen from her family. The Nazis understood art very well. One might say that they were incapable of recognizing real beauty, but they certainly recognized real value. Mm -hmm. And they stole major pieces of worldwide importance and were intent upon having uh, huge collections of magnificent art. So um, once these pieces have been recognized as having been stolen, hopefully they will be restored to the heirs of the people who did not survive. That's fascinating. It is a fascinating story. And it's yes. taking place uh, again, this is at Marsiki Hadas, the lecture? Yes. It's Tuesday, May the 8th. We would love to have as many people come out to it as possible. Uh, tickets are available. They're $25 in advance. It is a fundraiser. And people can call 828-2838 for tickets. It's a very easy number to remember. It is. 828-2838. You've got it. I'm terrible with numbers, but I remember that. <laughs> Well, thank you. I really appreciate you coming. I'm so happy you phoned me because I would have never uh, known about this and I'm, I'm really glad that you were able to come on. Well, thank you very and th much. And, uh, did I do okay? You were terrific, okay. Jonathan. Okay, thank you very much. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Shalom Ottawa, to our April show, and we look forward to speaking with you next month. If you have any questions or any comments or any suggestions about the show, please email us at shalomottawa at hotmail.com. Thanks very much, and shalom, Ottawa.